analytical chemistry of class 9 analytical chemistry is branch of chemistry which most of the children find confusing so today we are going to see some of the questions which are important from your class 9 pre boards icc point of view let us look at the questions the first type of question that you see is when they ask you to find the action of heat on the following substances the first one is copper carbonate copper carbonate is cucu3 on heating we will have because there is carbonate it will liberate co2 this is a gas so we show up arrow now from co3 co2 is gone so we will have cuo remain now this is a solid this is the gas so when you are asked to write the action of heat we will first show the balance reaction see copper one copper one atom each side carbon one atom carbon one atom and you will see o is three atoms here and three atoms here so our reaction is balanced now when it comes to the reaction this involves colors so you must always write your observation now what is your observation copper carbonate the color of copper compounds is normally blue or bluish green now this one is green so you will write green amorphous powder so it is green amorphous powder of copper carbonate liberates co2 gas so now remember it is colorless and odorless so we'll say colorless odorless co2 gas remember co2 gas also has certain observations for it so we have to write the observation what is the observation which turns lime water milky but has no effect on acidified potassium dichromate means k2cr2o7 solution also leaves black residue of cuo that is copper oxide so you will see that we have green amorphous powder liberated colorless odorless co2 gas and it leaves behind black residue of copper oxide let us look at another one blue vitriol now the word vitriol means sulfate so blue vitriol is blue sulfate and that is copper sulfate so we will have cuso4 now remember this is a crystalline substance so cuso4 dot 5h2o if this is heated then the water of crystallization will go away and it will leave behind cuso4 without the water of crystallization which means it is anhydrous and we will have 5h2o which will go up as the steam now what is the observation for this i'm writing it in short now this is how we have to write in the exam but i'm going to teach you the trick how to remember this so cuso4.5 h2o is the blue hydrated crystals and they are going to leave behind after heating it will be not blue but this will be copper sulfate without the 5h2o means without the water of crystallization so it will be here white amorphous anhydrous powder okay and this will be your colorless and odorless steam now a next reaction is zinc nitrate now zinc nitrate remember these are white crystals and when it is nitrate radical on heating we will get no2 gas now this is nitrogen dioxide so for this we will be writing reddish brown vapors of nitrogen dioxide the balanced reaction you must remember by heart any nitrate which is in the middle range not kno3 not nano3 but in the middle range will give us oxide nitrogen dioxide and oxygen so you must remember 2znno3 twice gives 2z no 4 no2 and o2 these two being gases you will show up arrow and for zno what will be right this is the residue so you have to write leaves the residue which is yellow when hot white when cold okay then we come to ammonium dichromate so we have ammonium that is nh4 twice dichromate is cr2o7 and when it is heated it will give you cr2o3 which is oxide of chromium 
plus 4 H2O that is it will go in the form of steam and N2 which is a gas. Now ammonium dichromate this is orange crystalline powder. On heating it gives flashes of light and it leaves a residue which is chromic oxide which is green in color. So this green colored chromic oxide is so much in mass it leaves a green huge mass and we call it as green voluminous mass of chromic oxide. This will be your main observation. Of course, there will be steam also evolved because you are heating. This will not be water in liquid state, but this will be steam and it will be colorless, odorless steam. Nitrogen has no observation. We now come to lead nitrate. It is all time hot favorite of the examiners. Now lead nitrate is PbNO3 twice. On heating, we remember for nitrates, we will take like how we took 2ZnNO3 twice. We will take 2PbNO3 twice. And as I told you in the middle region, we will get an oxide so pb that is lead will give pbo which will be 2 pbo because there are two pbs here and then it will give you no2 how many n's are here four so it becomes four no2 and plus it will have o2 up there now this is your white crystalline you have to remember the colors white crystalline powder it decrepitates decrepitates means it gives crackling sound on heating you can refer to my video on analytical chemistry where i have performed the experiments and i have told you how to remember these reactions i will put the link somewhere up so you can have a look at it okay so 2 pbo also called as litharge but when it is formed it sticks to the glass and it is buff yellow in color so we have to say that the residue is buff yellow yellow which sticks to the glass it stains glass yellow which is difficult to remove and of course NO2 is nitrogen dioxide which will be reddish brown fumes of nitrogen dioxide are seen and then we have colorless oxygen gas let us come to zinc carbonate zinc carbonate ZnCO3 like copper carbonate zinc carbonate on heating also will have the oxide remaining and carbon dioxide given out carbon dioxide we already know what is the observation for this it is colorless odorless gas which turns lime water milky and has no effect on acidified potassium dichromate solution but what happens to the zno this is the residue so you have to say this is the residue which is yellow when hot and white when cold and we saw the same observation even when we heated zinc nitrate so remember these observations so this is the balance reaction now let us come to the last one over here and that is calcium carbonate this you should be able to look at this and write on your own it is CaCO3 on heating will give us CaO and plus CO2 which is colorless odorless gas turns lime water milky and has no effect on acidified potassium dichromate solution sometimes they will even say potassium permanganate so potassium permanganate solution also will have no effect on this so now we come to CaO which is a white residue so we understood action of heat now let us look at another question the second type of question is where we take any dilute acid now they can give you action of dilute sulfuric acid or they can tell you dilute hydrochloric acid on the following and the first one they ask you active metal now what does active metal mean? The active metals are right on top of the ECCDs. So you can actually have K, Na, then we can have Zn, we can have Mg, Fe, but K and Na are right on top of the activity series. They are going to be violently attacking the acid. So we do not take those. Best thing will be to take either zinc or iron because these are the ones which will show a good reaction with dilute sulfuric acid. So let us take zinc plus H2SO4 and you must mention that it is dilute. Now zinc is an active metal. This zinc is going to displace this hydrogen from the acid and it will take this sulfate radical for itself. So it will become ZnSO4 plus we will have hydrogen which is up arrow. You can either write like this or you can even write the ion reaction. Now if it is ion reaction, it becomes Fe plus H2SO4 dilute. This Fe will displace H 
from the acid and it will become FeSO4 plus it will be H2 up arrow. Sometimes they will ask you what is the gas liberated. So we have hydrogen gas liberated. So what do we write for this hydrogen? This will be colorless, odorless gas which extinguishes the glowing splint with a characteristic pop sound. Okay, now when it is iron, because FeSO4 has color, we need to write the color. The color of FeSO4 will be light green solution. And for iron, it will be steel gray or blackish gray iron metal. And another substance that can be given to you is a carbonate. So if they tell you take a carbonate, remember for your carbonate best is to take sodium carbonate Na2CO3 and plus we will add H2SO4 dilute and that gives us if you look at this double decomposition reaction Na2SO4 plus H2CO3 means H2O and CO2 up arrow. Remember, this is H2CO3. Anytime H2CO3 is uh, found in the reaction, you have to write H2O and CO2. So, this is the balance reaction. And remember, we have carbon dioxide is formed. So, they can ask you, name the gas that is liberated. What will you write for CO2? You will say colorless, odorless, CO2 gas is liberated. Now out here, remember, sodium carbonate is powder and we have H2SO4 which is dilute acid, means it is in the solution form. So you are going to form Na2SO4 plus H2O, this is going to be solution. And through the solution, we are going to see this carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide will be seen as an effervescence and that too, it will be brisk effervescence. So colorless, odorless CO2 gas is liberated in the form of brisk effervescence and then we'll say which turns lime water milky but has no effect on acidified K2Cr2O7 solution and that would be our complete observation if they ask you action of heat on carbon okay now let us take another one which is sulfite now sulfite means it should have SO3 2 minus radical. Again, the best compound you can take is Na2SO3. This is sodium sulfite and this is a solid and we are going to add H2SO4 that is sulfuric acid dilute and again we will have this reaction taking place. So double decomposition will give you Na2SO4. This Na will take this SO4 and it will form Na2SO4 plus H2SO3 again being a weak acid will give you H2O plus SO2 up at. This is a solid, this is a liquid. This is again a soluble salt with water, this will be the solution. And H2SO2 that is formed will liberate the gas SO2. It will come through the solution in the form of bubbles. So we will say effervescence of colorless sulfur dioxide gas is liberated which has suffocating odor it smells of burning sulfur it also turns lime water milky and turns acidified k2cr2o7 solution from orange to clear green instead of this k2cr2o7 solution you may even write acidified kmno4 solution then in that case it becomes pink to clear colorless. Let us take another one that is sulfide. Sulfide which means it will have S2- minus as the negative radical. So again we will take Na2S or you can take FeS and if you add H2SO4 dilute in each one of them you will see this happening double decomposition Na2 will take SO4 it will become Na2SO4 and plus H2 will take this S and it becomes H2S Fe will take SO4 it will become FeSO4 and H2 will take S and it becomes H2S got that now 
Remember out here FES is black and this is light green. Now remember this is liquid H2SO4 dilute is aqueous solution of concentrated H2SO4. We have to make it dilute so it will have water content in it. So this is going to be solution and this will be a gas. So H2S what is it known for? It smells of rotten eggs and also it is a colorless gas. So for H2S what is the observation? It is colorless and it smells of rotten eggs and it turns lead acetate paper silvery black. So that is the observation for H2S. Okay now we have the third type of question. It is when we use the flame test. The third question is detecting metals present in the given salt using the flame test. Now for flame test there are three metals that you can identify at your level. So I will just show you the picture of it. Here there are the flames of certain metals. Now what we have to do is if we have a compound for which we have to detect the metal present supposing it is sodium potassium or calcium then we take the platinum wire we clean it nicely by dipping it in concentrated hydrochloric acid and then we dip it in the salt that is given we keep the platinum wire in the outermost region of the flame here and then you can see this over here there is a rod and there is a platinum wire and then as we keep it in the non-luminous part of this flame then we will see that it becomes golden yellow and so it is persistent golden yellow color seen then we say that there is sodium metal present in that compound now you will see here we take the potassium compound dip the platinum wire in that you can see this rod and this is the rod and this is the platinum wire over here this platinum wire has got potassium salt when the platinum wire is brought in contact with the non-luminous part of the flame then it turns lilac it is pinkish purple that is called as lilac colored flame and this comes like non-persistent it comes and goes comes and goes then we say that it is potassium present and then if it is brick red like this persistent then the compound which we have taken or the substance that we have taken it will have calcium metal present so remember if it is sodium then we write it as golden yellow persistent flame potassium then it is lilac non-persistent flame and we have persistent brick red flame then we have calcium present in it now let's see how we write that this is how we write our answers in the first bullet clean the platinum wire by dipping it in concentrated hydrochloric acid bullet number two dip the platinum wire in the salt and hold it in the non-luminous part of the flame then we will write a b c for the three metals a if persistent golden yellow flame is seen then sodium Na1 plus is present. B. If non-persistent lilac flame is seen, then potassium K1 plus is present. And C. If brick red flame is seen, then calcium Ca2 plus is present. Of course, there is another flame for copper also, but it is not in your textbook. It is not in your syllabus. It will be there for our class 10. Alright, so these are the three major questions of analytical chemistry that can be asked in class 9 chemistry. Class 9 chemistry is important and these questions are very very important so practice the reactions learn the observations and make sure that you get full marks in analytical chemistry of class 9 pre-board examination all the best to you thank you for watching